We have sung the story and we have heard from the scriptures the story of the Son of God come to earth. Those Old Testament texts, the prophecies about Messiah that said he would come, and then the narratives of his birth. Christmas marks this time for us of remembering the incarnation or the enfleshment of God, that God became man. God came to earth. I want to turn our attention this evening to a passage that is perhaps the most famous in the Bible. It might be deemed the summary statement of God's plan of salvation. I'm going to read to you John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. You need to understand that Christmas is about love, a very specific and particular love, the love of God for the unlovely. Listen to these words. God loved the world in this manner. When we think about God's love for the world, we might be tempted to think about how lovely we are and how valuable we must be that, that God would give us a gift. But this verse says quite the contrary. The world was a dark place, a place of sin and misery and death and rebellion against God. Oh, the world was governed by Satan and his forces and populated by those who by their very nature and then by their activities sinned against God. In fact, the world in this verse is a pejorative statement, a negative statement. It is intended to let the hearers know that the Messiah, the Jewish Savior, was not coming merely for the Jews He was coming for a much broader audience and an awful audience, a world filled from end to end with sinners in rebellion against God. And I want you to catch the main verb in this verse, God loved that world. I don't know about you, but for me, it's difficult to love the difficult, the unlovely. It's a challenge to do such a thing. God did not love us because we were worthy of his love. God loved us because it glorifies him to have compassion and mercy on the unlovely. It actually puts his own character on display to love the likes of us. It says God loved the world in this manner. That he gave. He gave. Christmas is a great time to think about gifts. And we might be tempted to think about giving a gift here as a nice pretty package wrapped up with a bow and a card. The give here is shorthand for what we just heard from Isaiah 53. It pleased the father to crush the son of his love. In place of the unlovely sinners God was choosing to love. Giving was not particularly nice in this verse. It meant that the father gave over the perfect son of his love to the hands of wicked men to be betrayed and tried on false charges and murdered. And besides the human side of dying on a cross, The giving over here means that Jesus was heaped up with the sins of all who would believe. So that the father's crushing him was an act of divine justice against sin. And because Jesus was carrying the sins of others, he, the sinless one, was actually crushed for sins he did not commit. He was crushed for the sins of all who would believe. God loved this world in this manner that he gave his son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. 
The implication there is that those who reject the Son, do not believe in the Son, will perish. They will, in fact, face the divine justice that Jesus faced on the cross. But for all those who believe in him, they will not perish. That means that divine justice was completely extinguished on Jesus at the cross so that the believing ones would go free. And the verse concludes with this guarantee. All those believing ones will have eternal life. To possess as a free gift eternal life that we could never earn and never deserve. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he first loved us. And the love of God was demonstrated in that He didn't love us when we were beautiful and lovely, but when we were at our worst, according to Romans 5, while we were still sinners and helpless. There is enmity between the world and God. And God is the only one who can make peace. And he does so by the blood of his own beloved son, who died in our place to bring us to God. That is love of an immeasurable degree. The love on the basis of which every other love finds itself, if it is true. And the only way to heaven. Do you understand Christmas? This infinite gift of God to the world. To solve our darkness. To forgive our sins. To bring us to him. This is the true definition of love. This is the real infinite gift. This is what Christmas is. This is why we sing. This is why we celebrate. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great gift that you gave in your son. I pray now that all who know him would rejoice all over again in this immeasurable gift. And we pray, O God, that those who do not yet know your love would be humbled by your love even this night and come to know you and know life through your son. We pray it in his name. Amen.